So today I'm on a quest to figure out who is the best striker in the featherweight division. I will be ranking them S through D tier with S tier being reserved for the number one best striker in featherweight. I have 20 or so fighters with 15 being the ones who are currently ranked. And I believe a few or so outside of the rankings. They're all outside the screen right now. I'm doing this MMA guru style. So let's not waste any more time and let's get it going. Starting off with, we have Nathaniel Wood. Now this is a tough one off the rip. Nathaniel Wood is a really good leg kicker and he, he embarrassed Charles Jordan. You know, and Charles Jordan had a great performance against Shane Burgos striking wise. He was piecing up Shane Burgos and then Shane Burgos had to grapple to beat him. And then Nathaniel Wood basically comes out and just whoops on Charles Jordan in the pocket. Leg kicks and everything. He embarrassed, I believe, wasn't Arosa. It was uh, the other, other Arosa, but it's like, I forget his name. I'm blanking on his name real quick, but he wasn't very good. Leg kicked him to death. I think he has really good potential, really far. He, he can go very far in the division. But I think I can't rate him too highly because he hasn't fought any of the top prospects, or not prospects, but top fighters at featherweight just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and put him B tier solely on potential and what I see in the future of Nathaniel Wood. B tier it is. I think he can definitely be an A tier in the future with his style. A former featherweight, I mean, a former bantamweight. So I do see him going pretty far in the division. He eventually will hit the rankings. But for right now, I just have to have put him at B tier because he's lacking that strength of schedule, so to speak. Moving on up next, we're going to go ahead and grab from the top here. We got Josh Emmett. Oh, Josh Emmett, definitely a B tier for me as well. I'll have him ahead of Nathaniel Wood for now, but he's definitely a B tier fighter. Um... Got embarrassed by Yair Rodriguez. Definitely got embarrassed by him. He was losing to Calvin Cater, in my opinion. I think he kind of fooled the judges in that decision with the way he was landing on the guard. So I do have Josh Emmett at B tier here. I think he's just lagging that extra. But he does have some great highlight real KOs. He is very powerful. He is a good striker. I think he would probably piece up Nathaniel Wood. No, I don't know about that. Maybe not. I think that'd be a good fight. But I do think he is, he has a better resume, obviously, than Nathaniel Wood. And a lot of fighters that will have blow in the C and D tier. So I will stick with him at the B tier for now. He just needs to, I feel like he just doesn't have that, that extraness, you know, that extra grit that some of the top fighters have at featherweight. Moving on. We're going to go ahead and go with Ryan Hall. Damn it. S tier. It's like, I'm just kidding. 100% D tier. Ryan Hall, I think there's no debate about this one. He's a D tier fighter. He has no hands whatsoever. I thought it'd be funny just to put him even in here. Pure jujitsu guy. He's a disgrace to the sport. He has no hands. He just basically is a roly poly in the octagon for 15 minutes. He has good kicks though. He has decent, I think like spinning kicks, but that's really it. His striking is blow mediocre it's blow average 100 for sure i just wish some of these guys these pure jujitsu guys would get their striking game up you know you see it you see an ortega who i will have later in the video you see a, an Oliveira. you know they use striking in to as a way to you know as a complement to their jujitsu game which is their main thing and i just some of these pure, pure jujitsu guys like like ryan hall and claudio puelas and Kron Gracie just don't have that, and it's just embarrassing to the sport. But Ryan Hall, D tier, I think that one's pretty clear. Not a good striker at all at featherweight. Moving on to the next one, we have Max Holloway. A tier, easy A tier. This one's pretty straightforward. Not S tier, though. I think we know why he's not S tier, but we'll get that get into that later. But Max Holloway, he pretty much is... The clear consensus number two at featherweight. He embarrasses anybody who is not on his level. He beats anybody who's a prospect who wants to have a name. Beat Aaron Allen. Beat Yair Rodriguez. Beat a lot of these guys. He's just Max Holloway, you know. His technique is good. He has great boxing. Great spinning back kicks. 
he needs to work on his leg kick game. That's really about it. But otherwise, he's probably one of the better boxers in the UFC. We all know that fight he had against Calvin Cater. He's the best boxer in the UFC, baby. Moving on. Next, we have Edson Barboza. Now, this one's also a pretty tricky one because old Barboza is A tier easily, but current Barboza, I don't know. Obviously, you no know, Barboza is one of the best leg kickers in the game. Former lightweight. I think I have to put him at B tier. I'm thinking about putting him at C tier because I don't know. But he just beat Billy Corintello by knee. He's just one of those good strikers, man. I have to put him there. I think just pure striking wise, you could probably put him A tier as well. Like he's kind of like right here, pure striking wise. But I think since he's gotten older, since he's moved down to featherweight, I think I have to put him at B tier. Obviously, I'm going to put Nathaniel Wood behind him because I don't think Nathaniel Wood is quite there to the Edson Barbosa level. He could be very similar games, leg kick wise. But I think Barbosa is a, is a nice B tier for me. Still a great striker, still doing the damn thing, but I think he's just kind of running out of time. Father Time's catching up to him. Moving on, up next we have Bryce Mitchell. And also a really tricky one. Bryce Mitchell is going to go... He could be a C-tier fighter, man. He could genuinely be C-tier, but I don't know. I'm going D... Uh, he's better than Ryan Hall, though. That's for sure. I think I have to put him... D-tier. He's just not a striker. He's a grappler. Just not a striker. He's a grappler. He does have some good hands. He did beat Barboza. He did drop Barboza. I think, I think dropping Barboza puts him C-tier. I just... I think I just have to. But then again, like the only reason he dropped Barboza because of the threat of the takedown. So that's a big deal in that. His takedowns are a huge part of his game. His grappling is a huge part of his game. But I think if you can drop Barboza on the feet and do, I wouldn't even say well against Ilya Tapuria. So he got he got pretty badly brutalized by him. But I think he did he didn't get totally embarrassed. Like he got embarrassed, but not, you know, shameful embarrassed. I think there is a possibility of him improving his game, his striking game. But grappling is definitely his main game. Striking-wise, I think I just have to put him C-tier. Strictly because he dropped Barboza. That's really all I have really for him. Moving on, up next, we're going to go with... Let me find somebody real quick. Here we go, right here. Brian Ortega. Oh... Striking wise, I need to put, I'm putting Ortega C tier. This is a hot take. This is a hot take. I think Ortega is a C tier fighter, striking wise, not, not fighter. Striking, just pure striking. Ortega is definitely a C tier fighter. He got embarrassed by Volkanovski. People in general have a misconception about that Volk fight, that it was close. Outside of round three, when Volk got that, guillotine that's that mounted guillotine it wasn't a close fight volk was piece him on the feet volk was pretty clearly schooling ortega on the feet and then max holloway basically broke him down and made him quit that's really all it is and i think when you get shown levels at this point it's just i don't think he's that good of a striker and then yair rodriguez as well putting it on him as well i think he was Easily winning that first round striking a year where Rodriguez was. And I think Ortega just isn't there. His jiu-jitsu is very good. It's very, very good jiu-jitsu. Obviously one of the best in the UFC so far. You might even have the best in the UFC. But I think that helps him with his striking game. And I think when you get shown levels by Max Holloway and Volk. And you were losing to Yair pretty clearly in that first round. I think his striking is definitely lacking. Definitely, definitely lacking. I think he definitely is a better, a better striker than Bryce Mitchell. We can probably put him. No, honestly, I'm gonna say he's like in the middle, in the middle between B and C tier. That's my final answer. He's right in the middle. Of, he's right in the middle of B and C tier. 
I just think that he has a little bit more to be desired in terms of striking and stuff like that. I I just don't know. Yeah, actually, I don't know, bro. It's, it's a hard one for Brian Ortega for me. I'll put him as a, as a B minus. We'll do that. We'll do a B minus for Brian Ortega here. Moving on. Next, we have Alex Caceres. I think we have the same thing. I'm going to put him at C tier. I'm going to put him at C tier for now. You might be able to convince me D tier. I mean, that's Bryce Mitchell, my bad. You might be able to convince me D tier, but I think I think C tier is pretty clear. Another good... He's pretty... He's pretty tricky on the feet. He's a good matchup, you know, for a lot of fighters because... Or a bad matchup for a lot of fighters because of how tricky he is on the feet. I will put him... At C tier, he was getting pieced up pretty bad by, was it uh, Sung Woo Choi? He was getting pieced up pretty badly by him as well on the feet until he got that that submission. So, and Sung Woo Choi is, you know, a national, I think, Muay Thai champion. He's a Japanese Muay Thai champion, something like that. Or no, Korean, Korean Muay Thai champion. But he get, but we see him lose to people like Mike Trezano. So I have to put him at C tier, bro. I think maybe even D tier would be nice for him. Oh, it's, it's C tier for me. I'm going I'm to put him at C tier. He's in the rankings. He's top 15. C tier for Alex Caceres. So we're doing it with him. Moving on. Up next, we have the Korean zombie. <laughs> the Korean zombie, I'm going to put him C plus. C plus for Korean Zombie, maybe B. It's just right now in his game. If you asked me years ago, I would say Korean Zombie is definitely A tier. But now I have to put him kind of at B tier. Brian like it's B tier, and then we'll do Korean Zombie. It's like C plus, B minus. How about that? How about that? That that one looks fair to me. But we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll do that. Yeah, I'm having like a just a heart attack trying to do this but just getting shown like he wasn't just shown levels against volk the korean zombie he was shown he didn't belong in the division anymore that was probably one of the few fights or one of the only fights where i was visibly cringing about how bad he's getting his ass beat that fight made me not want to watch mma for like a whole week because he got his ass beat so bad by volk and that tells me he's aging his last fight before the volk fight i think it was against dan ige and he really didn't do much besides grapple. You know, he, he was more of a grappling fight. He had the body triangle locked in for a good period of time. He was more so doing more grappling than he, he's ever been. Hopefully, I think he has time. I, I don't know. Like, I don't think he... He's retiring soon. He doesn't have much time. But I think he's pretty much... At this point, the Korean zombie is pretty... Pretty down bad. And I have to put him at... Put him at... In between B and C tier. I think he's at a... At that B minus stage of his career, if you asked me earlier again, he would definitely be higher. But I think that Volk fight tells me a lot about how he is striking wise in his career. Volk is that good too, but I think that he's just not there striking wise as of today. He's aging rapidly, he's retiring soon. That's just the Korean zombie. Moving on to the right side here, we have Jack Shore. Now, Jack Shore is a former bantamweight, moved up to featherweight. I wish he would get rid of that extra fat he has on him and just put on some, some size to him. But he's a pretty basic striker, in my opinion. I think he's pretty, I wouldn't say mid, but I think he's just very simple. His style is very, very simple. Let me move people over real quick so I can get more room. But I think his style is very, very simple. And I think B tier would be good. Like I think he would piece. I think he would. I think he would beat Bryce Mitchell. I think he would stuff his takedowns and then piece him up on the feet. I think he would avoid Alex Caceres, Caceres's awkwardness and beat him on the feet as well. So I think I could put him at B tier pretty confidently. But then again, he doesn't have a good resume as well. Resume is not there. He lost to Ricky Simone. I forget who he just beat. He just beat somebody at at featherweight but it wasn't like a crazy good win 
he probably shouldn't even be in here to be honest because he's just not there yet but i'm gonna put him at b tier just for the pure potential even though his style is very simple i think he could be a little bit more there his grappling is also very well he does, does a very good grappling but i think he has a little bit more to be desired in the striking game dude it just feels bad putting barboza here with jack shore i just can't do that i'll put c tier i'll put him at c tier i just can't have barboza and jack shore being in the same category as of right now just can't have it just cannot have it can't have it but we're gonna move on jack shore c tier i think it's pretty certified up next, we have Giga Jakedzi. I'm going to put Giga Jakedzi at... Put him as well at B tier. Now, before the Cater fight, I would have had him at A tier. Believe me. He would have been an A tier fighter, striking-wise. But I think since that Cater fight, he got kind of exposed for his boxing. He's a great kickboxer. That's what his background is in. But after the Cater fight, I just don't know like he has good finishing potential i think he would I, I i think he would beat the korean zombie on the feet and so i have to kind of rate him over that i have to put him at least b tier if i think he can beat korean zombie on the feet and that loss to cater kind of it's not stinky it's not a bad loss by any means but i think that really exposed some of his fundamental but not only fundamental boxing but i think his boxing isn't quite there yet even though cater is a great boxer it's just not there just yet B tier it is. If he beat Cater, he would be A tier for sure, but that didn't happen. He kind of got, I wouldn't say smoked, but he got beat up pretty bad in that fight. Clearly lost to Cater. So B tier it is. Moving on, up next, we're going to go with Dan Ige. Yeah, Dan Ige is a good C tier. I would pick Giga to body kick TKO him. Dan Ige just doesn't have that great awesome striking you know josh emmett was able to beat him on the feet josh emmett dropped him but he did do pretty well against josh emmett like he didn't do actually bad at all what was his last fight real quick i mean he ko'd gavin tucker he just ko'd damon jackson he just ko'd damon jackson i just don't rate him too highly i think if he fought anybody in the top 10 he would lose i think if he fought a barboza he would lose i think if he fought nathaniel wood he would lose if i ortega giga he lost. He already lost to Korean Zombie. Emma, I think he, he loses all his fights, especially Holloway. I think he loses the majority of those fights. But is he better than anybody at C tier? I think I would pick Jack Shore to beat him. Caceres, maybe not. Maybe not. Caceres is like at the bottom of C tier. So is so is uh, I think yeah. I'll put Ige at the top of C tier. Jack Shore right next to him. Then uh, Bryce Mitchell. And Alex Caceres. That's what I'll do. Danny A C tier. He just doesn't have those good wins. And whenever he does strike against top tier opponents, he does seem to lose and get outstruck by them. So Danny A C tier it is. Moving on. Up next, we have Calvin Cater. Now I want to put Calvin Cater at A tier. I think his boxing is really crisp. He beat Giga Jakedzi. He lost to Emmett, but I think he. I think he's better than Emmett. I think the I think the scoring with that fight against the Emmett fight was a bit weird. I think Emmett kind of fluffed his way to win that fight. And what I mean by fluffed his way, that he was laying a lot of shots on the guard of Cater. And that's why I think he kind of overdid it. And I think Cater, in terms of boxing, is is better than Emmett. And I think Emmett is that that solid B tier fighter. And I think Cater can definitely go above him. Yeah, I think Cater just has a, a bit more to offer in terms of striking. I think he has better boxing, obviously, than, than Emmett. I think he has obviously not good leg kicks because he is a boxer. But I think his striking is... I would put him at the bottom of A tier. I think the bottom of A tier is, is pretty well. Right? Now, up next, we have... Ilya Teporia. I... I really badly want to put him at A tier. I really do when I put him at A tier. I think he has the potential to be even S tier at some point in his career. But we don't have that resume for him. Like, how would he do? Like, I think if he fought like Josh Emmett, I think he would body kick. I'm not body. Kick, I think he would body shot TKO him. If he fought Dan Ige, he would walk him down, 
KO him out cold in the first round. We saw what he did with the Bryce Mitchell. He fought Giga, I don't know. That'd be kind of a bad matchup for him, but they won't ever fight each other because they're both Georgian. I think B tier is the most logical, but I think A tier makes sense though. Like, I think the only time we've ever seen Superior have any trouble on the feet was against Jai Herbert. At lightweight, a weight class up, he got head kicked, but he came back to finish him as well with a body shot, head shot. Like, I don't... I'm going to put Chapuria at A tier, but I'm going to put Calvin Cater just ahead of him. Even though I think Chapuria would probably... He might even beat Cater, honestly. But he's undersized. He's very undersized. Not for featherweight, but just in general. His reach is not very long. But until Chapuria gets that resume those accumulation of names i'm going to keep him at very low end a tier he's like a b plus you know he's a b plus for me but we're keeping him at a very low a tier very very low a tier moving on up next let me see how many do i have left i have a few left up here let's we got yeah you rodriguez a year, in my opinion, is for sure A tier, without a doubt, an A tier fighter. We saw him fight Max Holloway. Even though he lost that fight, he did have a great performance against him. It seems like lately he's been improving his striking a lot. He fought Ortega in that first round. Like I said before, he was pretty much piecing him up on the feet. Ortega's chin is pretty nice, man. Like Ortega's chin is very good because he was taking clean, clean one twos off the face. From Ayer Rodriguez. And I think Ayer's technique is just one of the best, you know? His head kicks are so fast. His calf kicks are crazily quick. Like, he, he has pretty much every tool in the box that I want to see from a featherweight fighter. And, like, we'll see against Volk how well he does. And if he truly is that S tier level fighter, we'll see on July, International Fight Week. But I think he's clear cut A tier, no doubt about it. Definitely one of the better strikers in the UFC. Got his title shot. He is sneaky good grappling. So I can really see Yair yeah, Rodriguez, you know, definitely potentially even beating Volk. I will take Volk in that fight, but I think he's definitely cemented himself as one of the top strikers at featherweight. Moving on up next, we have Arnold Allen. Arnold Allen is also A tier for me. I'm putting Tapiria B plus. That's what we're gonna do with him. Arnold, B plus for Ilya Tapiria. The issues I have with Arnold Allen, is just that he doesn't seem to have the best gas tank sometimes does seem to gas out. He did beat Sadiq Yusuf, but he gassed out in that third round. I think he would piece up and KO Josh Emmett. I'm not going to lie. Like he would beat him. He'd beat Nathaniel Wood. Don't know about Ortega though. On the feet, like he's better than Ortega, but I don't think he would. I don't know if he would beat Ortega, but I think Arnold Allen just has that, that it, you know, he definitely is improving his game. He's still pretty young. He, he lost to Max Holloway, but I think that that performance did cement him as one of the best strikers in the featherweight division. Moving on up next, I gotta fly through these. We're now almost 30 minutes in this video. We got Mavzar Evloev. I think he's pretty clear B tier. The only thing that kind of scares me is the performance against, uh, was it Diego Lopez? It did seem like he was getting outstruck in the, in the beginnings of those rounds, but does have good striking. His grappling's also very good. Like overall, he's a, he's a good MMA fighter, but I think just pure striking, talking about pure striking, he isn't like one of those elite level guys. Like he isn't a Yair or a Max or have a cater level boxing. You know, he's just one of those guys who's pretty good at striking, but it's a really good grappler in my opinion. So I think, I think Mavs or Evloev is clear B tier. I think he's on the low end of B tier. I think it'd be criminal to put him at C tier. So I think B tier is kind of his home here. I think he fits perfectly in that B tier. Up next, we have Sodiq Yusuf. I think he's also B tier. Actually, he might be C plus. Yeah, I think I have to put him B tier. I think, I think so. He's definitely B tier. He'd be Alex Caceres. He's just, he's just one of those better strikers, in my opinion. He lost to Honor Allen. He will lose to Marzo Evelov, in my opinion. But that's because of the grappling. Yeah, I would put him probably maybe a little bit above Mavzar Evelov in the striking department. I'm going to move Nathaniel Wood over here because he is, 
he should be at the bottom. But I think he is kind of that that low end, mid low end, B tier striker. He just doesn't seem to have anything super crazy on the feet. He is very good on the feet, but I think he just gets outclassed by a few people, such as Arnold Allen. I think Cater would piece him up, probably chin him. A year with Chinnam. Max would beat him up over five rounds, three rounds even. Emmett, mm, he probably could beat Emmett. I don't know about Barboza. Ortega, no, because I mean, the jujitsu is there. But I think pure striking wise, I think Sadiq Youssef does belong at mid, mid level B tier, in my opinion. Up next, we do have Nate the Train. Nate the Train. I'm going to put him high C tier. I'm going to put Nate the Train high C tier. Still weighing on that resume. Same thing with Jack Shore. He's a great fighter. He fought at KSW. He fought fucking, he fought Dagestanis. Like he fought some really good names over at KSW. David Onama, like David Onama did drop him a couple times, but he is like rangy, tricky at featherweight. But I love me some Nate the Train, bro. I love me some Nate the Train. I think he has potential, man. I think he is kind of coming into his own level as a striker. He does have some improvement to make. I think he will lose to a lot of the mid-level and, and top featherweights. Like, I think he'll lose to a Barboza, a Giga, a Sadiq Yusuf, a Mavzor Evloev, maybe even Nathaniel Wood. He is fighting Alex Caceres, but I think that got canceled, maybe. I think, I think it's rebooked. I don't know. But I think he would definitely... I'll strike Caceres on the feet. Just don't know about the grappling department when it comes to Nate the Train, even though he is a pretty decent grappler when it comes to you know, scrambling and takedown defense. But Nate the Train is underrated low-key. I think he's a good striker. I'll put him at C-tier. He's my guy. Nate the Train, I love him. I'm putting him at C-tier. It is what it is. Now, moving on to the final guy, who is the best striker at featherweight. I think this is pretty clear-cut. You knew this was pretty much coming. That is Alexander Volkanovsky, S tier. He is the best striker at featherweight, without a doubt. He beat up, pieced up, embarrassed Max Holloway for five rounds in their last fight. In their second fight, he was basically doing the same thing outside of getting dropped in two rounds. Volk is the king of striking right now at featherweight. We'll see how the Yair fight goes. I think he will beat Yair, but there is some danger. His chin isn't obviously, you know, the greatest in the world, but his striking technique, his reads, his educated approach to the striking game tells me that he is for sure the best at featherweight without a doubt in my opinion. I think people will agree with me on that, the majority of people. I think he would piece up a cater. I think he would piece up uh, an Allen. Allen may have a chance of beating him, of chinning him, but I think in terms of just pure technique, he would beat Arnold Allen. And Ortega fight, like he, he pieced up Ortega for five rounds. I think he is without a doubt, in terms of striking, the best striker at featherweight, maybe in the whole UFC. I don't know. I might do another video on that, do another tier list about the best striker in the UFC. But Volk has my vote for being the best striker at Featherweight. Thank you. And now, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe. I will be doing more tier lists in the future, especially with the upcoming break in the cards. I think we have, not this week, but next week off completely before we go back into June. So I will be doing some more tier lists, trying to get these done and cranked out as fast as possible. But thank you guys for watching. Peace. <laughs>